Hello everyone and welcome to Reininger's hashtag Tasty Tuesday or hashtag Tipsy Tuesday. The millionth day of our mandatory Washington State uh, shut-in. Man, it's getting long. So we're going to see if we can provide a little entertainment for you and a little, bring a little joy to your life to help us all get through this uh, shut-in process. Uh, first, we have some of Abby, who's our marketing director. We have some of her housekeeping, seeing how we're in the cellar. We're going to call it cellar keeping today. Uh, but first of all, i uh, let you know what we're doing today. We're going to be tasting the 2017 Runninger uh, Bordeaux uh, blend called BDX. And uh, this is a new blend for us. And uh, we debuted it in December. And uh, so just let you know it's $30 a bottle. 10% of the proceeds of each bottle goes to the Blue Mountain Action Council. It's a local organization here in town. And the proceeds go to helping families in need, paying their rent, electricity, even food services. And some of it also goes to the food bank too. So it goes to a very good cause for those Walla Walla uh, wine lovers uh, here. And uh, so we really appreciate uh, your support in that. So to start with, here we go. <clears throat> this is our Reininger BDX Bordeaux blend here. Uh, we used to do some Bordeaux blends earlier uh, when we first started. When we first started Reininger Winery in 1997, we were uh, we're planning on being Bordeaux centric, but my imagination and a sense of adventure took me to all sorts of other realms such as uh, Rhone varietals and some Italian varietals and so we're having lots of fun here, but um, One of the cornerstones of Reininger is education and so that led us to producing single varietal wines in other words wines made from a single grape so people can learn and experience what those varietals are for instance we do varietal bottlings of petit verdot malbec carmenere cabernet franc merlot cabernet sauvignon all these are bordeaux specific uh, grape varietals or great types that are traditionally grown in Bordeaux. So in order for uh, the consumer and our wine family friends to be able to learn about those specific grapes and how they may manifest themselves in other wines, uh, it's important to experience those wines as 100% the grape. So uh, with that, um, also what's fun, we decided to bring back um, a Bordeaux blend, which is our BDX. The wonderful thing about blends is that they create a synergy by blending the different grapes together, it creates a synergy, filling in different uh, uh, voids or holes, if you will. Uh, it could be tannin or color or a certain flavor, mouthfeel, the finish. Um, so one backing up the other and being, you know, right on teammates, that sort of thing in, in the bottle here. So that's what this wine is all about and uh, why we're producing it. Same thing with our vineyards though. This is actually 70% Seven Hills Vineyard. Uh, Seven Hills has been named by uh, Wine Spectator as one of the top 100 uh, vineyards in the world. Something we're very proud of. We've been working with that vineyard and Pepper Bridge since 1997 when we first started. Um, and both those vineyards are in here along with XL which is right uh, next to uh, uh, Seven Hills Vineyard. So uh, those are the main vineyards that are in this uh, wine. The wine is 49% uh, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, 25% Merlot, and uh, a blend of some of the other Bordeaux characters that I mentioned earlier, a little Malbec, uh, Petit Verdot, and so on, so Cap Franc. Um, so uh, again, it just kind of creates that synergy and gives you a sense of the whole. And that's what I like to do with the vineyards in Walla Walla often, is blending the different vineyards together to give you a sense of the whole, the entire Walla Walla Valley. So with that, let's check this wine out. Man, it does have beautiful color. But one of the things that really stands out to me in this wine is this beautiful, beautiful, uh, exuberant cherry that uh, just explodes out of, off the, out of the glass and into the nose. 
and there's a little bit of uh, oak spice on there, some wonderful, uh, uh, wonderful notes of plum and a little bit of floral violet. And man, and what's also really fun, um, I already mentioned a little bit of the wood spice that just kind of seems to escort all of these flavors along. But it's just really kind of, all these things is kind of party in the glass. Mm. I'm not sure, I think I'm required to do that for legal purposes. <laughs> but anyway, man, this does have a dynamic fruit personality going on here. Again, it starts off with lots of uh, big red cherry in the mouth, uh, some a little bit of black currant going on, fig, plum. Mm. You know what? Uh, and along with all that wonderful fruit, though, there's some really fun, interesting things happening in this. Hints of uh, dark chocolate, a little bit of mint, vanilla, and um, this kind of under, real gentle underlying layer of, um, uh, of graphite. And people, oh, graphite, yeah, actually it's really kind of a common, common thing in, um, in wine oftentimes, but it's just, just a hair in there. So, um, but yeah, it's absolutely delicious. It has a real luscious, Real wonderful, luscious mouthfeel to it. Um, it has, that's uh, supported by the, um, and balanced by this wonderful, what I like to call, uh, it's kind of a kinetic uh, acidity. So when it first uh, hits my palate, I get this energy, if you will, from, from the acid, a little bit of liveliness, but um, the more sips I take of this, the more that uh, little kinetic energy kind of mellows out a little bit and we experience those luscious, uh, soft, round tannins. It has a really nice round, soft tannin structure. You know, and we bottled this here last fall and uh, um, actually I want to say it was July. Is, is that it? You know what? I'm going to look at some notes over here and see. It was last fall, by golly. It was September 26 when we bottled this. And um, so that was in the middle of harvest. That's never fun. Stopping uh, in the middle of harvest to bottle. Gosh, man, what a pain in the you know what that is. But actually, it's always fun to bottle. It's always a big team effort. And, uh, uh, you know, we always give each other a bad time. And uh, believe it or not, we have a lot of fun doing it here at Reininger. I know most wineries and winemakers consider it the bane of their existence, bottling, but we actually turn it into something really fun here. But uh, anyway, there's also a tiny bit of loam going on in here. Um, one other thing I want to talk to you a little bit about was just the vintage itself, the 2017 vintage. Uh, started out with a cool spring, a little bit of dampness there, but then we had a very hot summer. It accelerated the sugar ripening of it. And then we had, it slowed down in the fall, I should say the temperatures cooled down a little bit. So we got a little more hang time. It's really important to these later varietal, ripening varietals, such as Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Verdot. Um, uh, it's nice to get that extra hang time. With the Petit Verdot though, we still need the, enough heat to ripen it. That's such a late ripener that sometimes um, we don't get enough heat to ripen that properly. But uh, anyway, um, that really sums up this wine. It's a, it's a great, great uh, Bordeaux blend and uh, we're just so glad to have this inaugural vintage here, the 2017 uh, BDX here for your enjoyment and uh, you can find it in your uh, uh, favorite uh, specialty wine shops. Call us up here at the winery. Uh, we can deliver it here in Walla Walla. We can deliver it uh, up in Spokane. So um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll bend over backwards to help put this wine in your hand. So you can call us up 
uh, if you want to come by and uh, well, order some ahead of time or just even stop in, we can't taste you on it uh, because that part of the, our wine operation is closed, but uh, you can walk in the door and pick up an order. So, love to help you out on all that. So, thank you very much. Again, I usually love to say, you know, go hug your family and take care of them in these times. I know we're supposed to uh, practice uh, physical and social distancing here, so uh, take care of yourselves and it uh, looks like there's light at the end of the tunnel. But uh, let's be prudent and smart about our, our hygiene and health habits here and uh, let's not let this C19 thing kick us in the you know what. So. Let's kick it and then you know what. So take care everybody. Until next time. Adios. <laughs> <laughs>